So when working on projects, a lot of the times we wish the audio was uh, internally recorded into the camera so that they were perfectly synced up. A lot of the times that's not really an option. For a lot of YouTube videos, you'll typically see on the top of the camera, they'll have a Rode Video Pro, typically not the best audio if you're doing some type of an interview at a distance. So you'll have to mic up people and use some type of external recorder. And then you have the great thing of being able to take it all into DaVinci Resolve and then having to sync it all up, which can be a whole process in itself. But there are a lot of tools in DaVinci Resolve to make this super easy. And then when you're editing, if they're done the proper way in DaVinci Resolve, editing is a breeze because DaVinci Resolve just treats them as if it's already a native uh, audio track in the video itself. So when you have when you're on the edit page, you're not moving around separate elements. Let's jump into how we would actually go about doing this. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to let you know about my website, jrtv.com, where we have hundreds of different templates available for DaVinci Resolve 17, 16, and 15. All of them are backwards compatible with the newest version of DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't taken a look, the selection of templates is pretty diverse with everything that you would typically think when you think templates, everything from titles, transitions, infographs, logo stings, slideshows, video displays, video effects, compositing elements, as well as a bunch of color preset tools specifically for DaVinci Resolve's color page. If you're interested in taking a look for yourself, there's a link in the description. All right, so the setup that we're gonna be doing today is uh, two different methods because there's potentially two different reasons why you would have to do uh, this, me this, this method. Uh, we're going to exclude if you have time code because uh, most situations you won't have the luxury of having time code. Time code makes things a lot easier, but nine times out of 10, you don't have that luxury. So now what we're gonna be working with is, first one is having scratch audio. So having uh, audio that for like your, your camera that has built-in mics, um, so we can work off of that. And then we also have the external recorder, a mic pack, maybe an in-hand mic, something like that, getting recorded to another device. The second way that we're gonna do this is not having any audio from the camera, but we have something visually to represent a point. And so in a lot of uh, videos or behind the scenes, you'll see people using the clapboard, the clapper on the top. Obviously when it closes, it's going to make an audible sound. The waveform is going to have that peak. And then in uh, some videos, if they don't have access to that, You'll have like talent on screen, just clapping once to make that peak in the waveforms. So then you have a point of visually representing when the sound was made and then in the waveforms showing that peak. <clears throat> okay, so now let's show both ways of doing that in DaVinci Resolve the proper way. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I just wanted to quickly show you the setup and how these different things work. So here is my camera with the mic. So as you can hear here, I just wanna make sure that we actually are recording the audio here. Okay, we are. And you can hear that it's like very low. Now we could boost this up. We could boost that up and we can see these, right? Obviously sounds horrible. So uh, the first way is going to be taking that and then taking this one. Oops, quickly, this mic here, which sounds, so this sounds significantly better, right? And then one thing that you'll notice is that they are different, you know, lengths and that could be uh, they started rolling on the camera before, you know, they actually started rolling on the audio. So, uh, and DaVinci Resolve will deal with this. And then the other way, it's just, you know, no audio, but we have that visual representation of our sound. And then in our waveform, we can also have that clap as well, right? So these are the two ways that we're going to. So this is, you know, pulling everything in into DaVinci Resolve if you didn't use this method and then you would have to align them and, and so on. So let's not do that. Let's just jump right over into our media page. <clears throat> and this is where you're typically gonna wanna bring in stuff. I'm just, for now, just going to delete this just so it's not another element to add into the mix. So the first way is we're going to be linking up everything that has audio. So the camera mic, 
and then uh, the other recording that we had. And this is super simple. So to do this, we're just going to highlight everything. So like, let's say we have 30 shots, you know, we don't wanna go through and see which one goes with which one. Nah, just let the Ventry's all figure that out. So we'll highlight them all, right click, auto sync. Like I said, we don't have time codes, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna do it based on waveform. Click the button, does everything, done. And now it's saying that, okay, I couldn't find matches for these. And this is just letting you know what, you know, I couldn't find matches for, great, but we knew that. So now let's listen to our uh, one with the audio it's on that camera way up there. And I don't even know if I'm in focus, but it gets the point. So there we are. Now, if you have headphones with left and right channel, you can see that we're getting everything in the left channel. So we'll, we'll deal with that here in a second. But let's first go into the second way of doing this, which is taking our no, our, our no mic, and we're gonna go through and find where we have either the clapboard or we have talent clapping for us, making that sound. And so it's right there. And what I like to do with the arrow keys is go back. So hands aren't touching, hands are touching. Okay, so that's the first thing that we're gonna do. Next, we're gonna pop open audio, go over to waveform, and then in here, we're going to grab, and this is where you're gonna have to know which audio track it was. So I'm gonna grab my other audio track, and then we can uh, listen through here, or we can just come to right where it's at, and we're going to just arrow key till we have that sound. So now we have the video with the sound, the audio with the same sound. Now I'm just going to currently have the audio selected. You can have either one selected. We're going to select the other one as well by holding down control. My other one selected, now we have them both selected. We can come over here to the waveform panel and click the little link button. Now they're linked. So now if I have this audio, or excuse me, the one with no audio, and I play it, now we have the audio, we have that, uh, synced up. So now let's deal with the only in the left channel. So if I come over here to my meters, and let's go to the one that has a bit more audio so we can actually see this. Um, so as you can hear we can now, hear it's all in just the left channel. So we're gonna fix that. And to fix that, we're going to right click on here and we're gonna come up to clip attributes, then into audio. Now this is saying that we have this linked source and obviously it was only a you know mono uh, recording. So we're gonna go into the other link source and we're going to grab the left channel of that, which as we can see, the left channel was channel one. That's the one we had. So we're just going to make this channel one as well. And now if we play this, specifically this mic here, now we have in both channels. So that's how we would do that. The other thing that I want to show you is once you have things linked up, how can we see which ones they're linked up to and which ones actually have the things linked to them? Like the audio. If we scroll over, we can see here synced audio and it's saying what that file is that's synced for the audio so that we have that. So next, let's go over to the edit page. If we grab the one that had no audio before, start recording. Now, now we have everything that we didn't have before. We have that. And we'll just grab the other one as well. Whoa, that one's a lot bigger. Bring this over here for now. Which sounds a lot better than just the camera mic that's on that camera way up there. So now if you ever have to listen to something else, you can always just go back into the clip attributes. This is not affecting the source material, meaning the files that are actually on your computer. It's not going to manipulate them, change the audio or anything like that. This is all done in DaVinci Resolve. It's pretty much just playing both pieces of material at the same time. It's playing the video and the audio files at the same time, um, but obviously how we had it set up in DaVinci Resolve. If we go back into our computer, and actually look at those files, those files are gonna be the way that they always were. And typically in a lot of situations, you would never want to change those because you never know if you have to go back and get something. Um, there's a lot of situations where off camera, you, know, you have a, someone else that comments on something and sometimes you have to pull that audio and maybe boost it 
with um, like captions, you know, it might be hard to hear, but you can hear it. That stuff is never affected. This is just how it's being uh, displayed on the edit page for editing, uh, but you can always go back. And don't forget about those the clip attributes that we can go in and adjust that. Uh, we can always pull back the audio from the actual video clip if we ever need it. So that's pretty much how we would sync it and then have the ability on the edit page to, like you can see here, treat them like they're like it's only one element, which is very nice. It makes things a lot easier whenever it's time to edit because we're not moving around multiple levels of audio and stuff like that. So that's how we would go about doing that. And uh, don't forget that if we, using, did I do it for both of these? Right. And now, oh, this one I didn't. So don't ever forget that we can always just go in to whatever this is. This is the no mic one. And then go into our clip attributes, audio, and then just switch whatever we want it, that channel to be like that. Delete it quick and we'll just re-bring it back on. Um, we have that. And now we have the left and right channel. You could always just put it to mono as well, but I just wanted to show you the different uh, abilities that you do have. So I think that covers everything in audio syncing in DaVinci Resolve. Hopefully you guys learned something with this one. And until the next one, my name's JR. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace.